This week, whistleblower David Grush told News Nation that non-human craft has been recovered and kept by the United States in a task force retrieval program. Uh, the UAP task force was refused access to um, a broad crash retrieval program. When you say crash retrieval, what do you mean? Uh, these are retrieving non-human origin uh, technical vehicles, you know, call it spacecraft if you will, non-human, exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed. We have spacecraft from another species. We do, yeah. How many? Quite a number. You are one of the most trusted former intelligence officials in the U.S. defense and intelligence establishment. Yes, I was. The Pentagon has undermined Grush's claims about this alleged secret program. Department of Defense spokesperson Susan Goh said in an email to Fox News Digital that to date, AARO has not discovered any verifiable information to substantiate claims that any programs regarding the possession or reverse engineering of extraterrestrial materials have existed in the past or exist currently. Back in 2017, the New York Times published an article that revealed a secret Pentagon program to investigate UFOs. One of the authors, Leslie Kane, has been reporting on UFOs for many years and also published a book in 2010 called UFOs, Generals, Pilots, and Government Officials Go on the Record. Here to tell us more about her time reporting on UFOs and recent claims on the topic of extraterrestrial life is Leslie Kane. Welcome. Hi, thank you very much. Great to be with you guys. It's great to be here with you. What do you make of Grush's claims that there are craft or potentially even pilots? I can't comment at all on the pilot part of it because that's not that was not part of our reporting and I never spoke to him about that. Um, so that that's aside, but in terms of his his I guess you'd call them claims, his his allegations that there are actual retrieved craft. I take it very, very seriously. Otherwise, I wouldn't have reported on it. And not only because of what he has told me, but because of what a number of other people have told me, quite a few, both on and off the record, but mainly off the record, uh, that there are many others like him who are not whistleblowers, but have the same information. And in fact, others that may have more direct information than he does because they have been inside programs, which he has not. So I think there's a lot more to come and there's a lot more to back up his claims than what has actually been made public. And can you uh, tell us more about what you've heard about the retrieval of crafts that are specifically non-human? Because I, you know, I, I think I could understand someone saying, or many people coming forward to say, that pilots have seen objects that they couldn't identify, that maybe parts of, of crafts were, I, were, were then re retrieved, and maybe we couldn't explain where they'd come from, but the operating theory would be they were craft from other countries or parts of weapons programs or something. This sounds like specifically it's being described as non-human, or that there's something indicated in what was recovered that this, this originates off-world or something like that. Have, have you heard, when you've talked to, to people on the inside, the non-human part of it specifically emphasized, or just a, just a mystery, well, we, you know, we, this doesn't originate from the U.S. government, we don't know. Right, it's a very good distinction, very good question, Robbie, because we have to make that distinction here. We are actually talking about non-human, which means these have been determined to be that through whatever scientific process has been used to make that determination. And all of that information is classified. There was one statement that Grush made in our story alluding to describing the types of processes that are, are used. I don't have it right in front of me. You guys might have it, but the problem is for us in the public is that all of the data on that is, is classified. But I do want to make the point that he is yes, he's making a very, very distinct dis uh, distinction here from, you know, between something that's just anomalous and maybe we can't figure it out versus something that has actually been determined to be of non-human origin. There are two different things. And he's talking about the latter here, that these have actually been determined to be no of non-human origin. And I have spoken to others who have confirmed the same thing. Hmm. So how would we make sense of this and the recent reporting around UFOs or UAPs 
Is this a soft launch of clear awareness of extraterrestrial life, but maybe we don't want to tell the public everything so as to roll it out slowly and give them time to process it? Uh, can we understand this to be a, a soft launch of our awareness of extraterrestrial life based on the craft that we, we know that is there, that has been recovered? I mean, it's such a great question, uh, Jessica, and it's so hard to answer that. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a reporter, and so whenever I get some good information that I think is important, I'll put it out there. But I don't really know if there's some kind of orchestrated campaign going on behind the scenes. It's hard for me to comment on that. Um, and I also think, you know, the, the thing about extraterrestrial life, that's such a loaded term. I mean, if we have a craft that is not of non-human origin, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's some extraterrestrial aliens that have come here and crashed it or dropped it here. Or I think the, the actual origin of it is so, could be much more complicated than that. You know, that the, the concept of extraterrestrial life or what the intelligence might be that's behind the creation of these vehicles is a big unanswered question. Um, and I don't think that's a simple one, but you know, it is an incredible mystery and it's an incredible claim to be made here. I mean, this is absolutely mind blowing. And I think what's important about it is that, that it lead to further investigation because there is no proof of this and we don't offer proof of that. And neither does David Grush. It's all about the people that he has spoken to that have provided him with information. So the Congress needs to take this up. And I, I, they just announced today that they, they do want to hold the appropriations committee wants to hold hearings on this. So it's the beginning of an investigation that needs to happen to find out more. Hmm. What is your awareness of how, um, I, I guess, how widespread within the government, you know, how many, what levels of people having access to this information that has been classified? You know, obviously we're talking about in a political context, Donald Trump, other people having classified documents that they, that they took or that they have in their private possession. Because my, my, my skepticism begins to fire. You know, I, I fully believe the government's including our own, suppress information all the time. The more you know, people involved with knowledge for the longer period of time, the more I start to become skeptical that it's possible to, you know, to keep, to keep secret, a secret of this magnitude. Um, you know, how closely guarded has this, has this um, uh, what has been reported to government officials uh, been kept? You mean over the years, right? Yes. Because these, these programs go back a long time. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously been incredibly closely guarded. Uh, um, a few, you know, people have come out from time to time and, and talked about it, but they haven't had anything to back it up and they haven't had the level of credibility that David Rush has. They hadn't filed complaints with the ICIG. You know, they haven't gone to Congress and given hours and hours of information. So this is this is kind of at a new level of any any person that's ever come forward before because of who he is and how he's going about this. And I'd, I would have to say, you know, now it is coming out. I mean, yes, it, it's been held very, mm -hmm. very tightly. One person involved told me that it costs more for the program to maintain the security that has to be maintained to keep it that way than it does for them to actually do the work that they're doing. I <laughs> mean, the security is a huge element of it. But that's starting to break now. And we hear, this is the beginning of that. So um, maybe you can't hold on to it forever. You just take someone like David Grush to come forward and feel it's his obligation to do so, and everything changes. We'll see where it goes. Mm. Yeah, really fascinating and exciting stuff. Thank you so much for coming on to talk about this with us, Leslie. You're so welcome. Thank you guys, both of you, for covering it and taking an interest. I greatly appreciate that. Have a good day. Thank you. <laughs>